Hey, first grade. Today we are going to start learning about Rosa Parks. Now we did start talking about Rosa Parks this morning in morning meeting, and we read this book right here, my book about Rosa Parks. We also talked a little bit about this passage that's in the front of your packet right here and the timeline of her life, which timelines are great text features that help kind of map out major events that take place. And we are going to go ahead and watch a Pebble Go about her or listen to a Pebble Go. And then I will explain your Rosa Parks assignments and your phonics assignments today. You will also want to have this book, not right now, but when you do your assignments, because I'm going to ask you to read it again, since this is going to help you complete one of your assignments today. Let's go ahead and take a look at this Pebble Go all about Rosa Parks. Rosa Parks was a civil rights pioneer, and a pioneer is a person who was among the first to do something. In civil rights, it's the rights that all people have to freedom and equal treatment under the law. She was born Rosa McCauley in Alabama in 1913. Rosa and her family were African American. Her grandparents taught her that all people should be treated equally. And this right here is a photograph of Rosa Parks. Early life, Rosa was a good student, but she could only go to schools for black children. Segregation laws at the time kept white people and African Americans apart. Rosa did not believe in segregation laws. And remember, segregation means separating people based off based because of their skin color, which we know is not right, but we've been learning about how that's how it was back then. And it says a school for African American children. Early work. Rosa married Raymond Parks in 1932. They both worked to end segregation. One day in 1955, a bus driver asked Rosa to give up her seat to a white man. Rosa refused. She was arrested. This right here looks like her at the police station. They're taking her fingerprints. Rosa's arrest led black people in her town to boycott riding city buses. And a boycott means to refuse to buy or use a product or service to protest something believed to be wrong or unfair. So since what happened where she refused to give up her seat, you know, many people thought that was completely wrong. You know, the fact that she was arrested, they said, okay, we're not going to ride buses anymore. It says the boycott lasted one year. Rosa took her case to the U.S. Supreme Court, which is the most powerful court in the United States. The court decided segregation on public buses was illegal, meaning it was against the law. So what she did by standing up for herself, she brought about amazing change. Right here it says Rosa going to court. Contributions. Rosa worked all her life for equal rights. She was given the Medal of Freedom in 1996. She died in 2005. People remember Rosa as the mother of the civil rights movement. And right here, this is a photograph of Rosa Parks reading a book about herself. Let's go ahead and watch this video. It says Rosa telling why she didn't give up her bus seat. Well, he didn't say those words. He just wanted to tell us he had to have those uh, seats. And I didn't move because I didn't feel like it was helping us and making things lighter for us, uh, me as an individual and us as a people, to continue to be pushed uh, around because of our race and color. All right. Let's take a look at our assignments for today. So it's great what she said. She said, you know what? It's not fair that we're pushed around because of our race or color, which is absolutely right. And great that she stood up for herself, which is amazing. So first thing I'm going to ask you to do is read this book again, the My Book About Rosa Parks. And feel free to color the pictures. You can go ahead and color the pictures. Then you are going to complete this page right here. Up at the top, it says comparing Rosa to Martin. And we're talking about Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. It says, how are Rosa Parks and Martin Luther King Jr. alike and different? We're using what's called a Venn diagram. And over here where it says Rosa Parks, you are going to list, I'm going to ask for two. 
two things. So just a bullet point, and it does not need to be a complete sentence, but two things that, you know, only apply to Rosa Parks over here, two things that only apply to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. over here, and then in the middle, one thing, just one thing that applies to both of them. So something maybe that they both did, you know, something about both of them that is really similar. So that is what I'm going to ask you to do. Two for Rosa Parks, two for Martin Luther King Jr., and one for both of them, bullet points. So bullet points, short phrases, they do not need to be complete sentences. Down here, it says Rosa Parks took a stand for something that mattered. How can you be brave too? And you are thinking about, you know, something that you can do to be brave. It can be something small. Something that I think of is making sure to always stand up for myself or my friends when I know that something, if something is going on and it's not right, standing up and just saying super respectfully, you know, I disagree with what's going on. I don't think that's right. And, you know, I want you to think about any moments in your life where you know you can be brave. It can be something as, you know, I was scared to go on a roller coaster and I did it. Okay. Anything in your life that you can think of that you, you know, might be nervous about, but then you say to yourself, I can do this and you do it. Sometimes you just have to dive in and you have to do it. And then you'll be so proud of yourself after when you think back and you're like, oh my gosh, I did that. So I will give you a sentence starter. It's just going to simply say, I can be brave by, and then you will list how you can be brave, okay? Okay. So there's that sentence starter. I can be brave by, think of how you can be brave, something that you can do to be brave. And I will post a picture of this on class story. The only other assignment is right here. And this actually, boys and girls, is for 10 extra dojo points. So this is a Rosa Parks word search. You can use a highlighter, you can use a pencil to circle, you can circle with a crayon, does not matter to me. These are all the words down here you are looking for. Bus, Alabama, equal, arrested, segregation, boycott, rights, Rosa. And you are going to try and find them in this word search. If you complete this word search, you'll see the post says optional. If you complete this word search though, you will get 10 dojo points, okay? So this is completely optional. Your other assignments today are phonics pages 265 and 266. 265 looks like this. It says name each, name each picture. If it has the long E sound, draw a line to the leaf. So very similar to the one that you did the other day. If you see it has the long E sound, you are just drawing a line from that picture to the leaf. If you want to color them, you can, but you do not have to. And then page 266 looks like this, just like that worksheet we did the other day. Look at the picture, draw a circle around the correct word to finish the sentence, write the word on the line. So again, the picture is going to help you figure out what word they are looking for. So make sure you look at the picture, circle the correct word that completes the sentence based on what's going on in the picture, and then write the word neatly on the line. And boys and girls, what I will actually do today, I will put all of these pages on one post. So it'll just be pages 265, 266, and then this page right here that you need to post. The only page that will be separate is the word search, and it'll have those big words optional just because you do not have to do this, but it is optional if you would like to earn 10 dojo points. All right, first grade, tune back in tomorrow to learn even more about Rosa Parks, and I hope you have a great day. Bye.